Hello, this is Bob Steele, and this is lecture we will continue on chapter 21. We are now measuring cost behavior. So measuring cost behavior, the objective is to classify all costs as either fixed or variable costs. We will look at the three methods. So the idea being that we need to determine each cost, what type of cost it is, so that we can then use that knowledge in order to make these types of predictions. Now, in some cases, this is going to be easier than in other cases. And in order for us to get our variable cost equations, we could use these different types of methods in order to approximate whether a cost is variable, fixed, and what basically the slope of the cost is. One, we can use a scatter diagram. Two, we can use a high-low method. And three, we can use the least squares regression. So these are mathematical ways to try to figure out the slope of the cost line so that we can approximate these slopes and thereby make judgments and relevant decisions into the future. So a scatter diagram is a plot of cost data points on a graph. It is, it is almost always helpful to plot cost data to be able to observe a visual picture of the relationship between cost and activity. So many times if we plot the data that we know has happened in the past, it may not be a perfect line all the time, but it will most likely have a trend. And if we plot the points, then we can have a trend such as this. So if we look at the actual data points that happened in the past and we plot them such as in this point we have a cost of 25,000 and we have the volume the number of stuff that we produced 25,000 and if we if we do this for each data point in the past and we get a collection of data that is is enough to be relevant we will then generally get a type of scatter plot line here so it it may not be perfect but we can see type of trend happening here and then the idea being that we will then draw the line to approximate as best we can the uh, the points and that will then give us the slope of the line and then we can determine the slope and the behavior of the line based on the scatter plot of actual activity and of course you'll notice that the fixed cost here is pretty you know we don't need a scatter plot for the fixed cost of course because the rent is the rent that one is going to be a pretty straight line so the next idea that we could do is the high low method and this is kind of like a simplified method where we're just really trying to take two points and notice just like when we're graphing any line if we take two points on the line then we can measure the slope of the line based on those two points so the idea of the high low method is that we'll take the high point and the low point the two points on the line the two extreme points and we will then get the slope from those extreme points and then we will know the slope of the line meaning we'll know what the variable costs are then using that data we can figure out what the fixed costs are so we're kind of backing in to it in this way so if we're going to use the high low method the following relationship between units produced and total costs are below so we have the units produced and the total cost units produced total cost similar to what we had graphed in the prior um, slide so using these two levels of activity compute the variable cost per unit and the total cost per unit. So what we're going to do is pick the highest and lowest production volumes and take those two points. And in this case, uh, the high activity level was in units 67.5, which had a related cost of 29. The low activity level was 17.5, which had a cost of 20,008. The difference being the 50 and the 8.5. Uh, if we put that into a slope type formula where we're taking uh, the slope of the line in a, in a division problem, we would take the change in the cost, the 29 minus the 25, which is that 85, over divided by the change in the units, which is the 67.5 minus the 17.5 gives us that 50. The 85 divided by the 50 means the slope of the line is 17 cents. So now we know the variable portion. We know how much it increases by what we don't know at this point is the fixed portion of the line and if we take about look at this equation then we know that the total cost of anything assuming there's only two components to it a fixed portion and a variable portion is uh, the fixed portion and the variable portion All right, and what what do we know about the variable portion it goes up per unit so we know uh, we got the variable cost per unit times the number of units so if we plug the numbers into this formula, we can say that the total cost is 29 if we're taking this level. And we have the fixed cost is the unknown, that's x. 
and then uh, the cost per unit is the 17 cents and we're going to take the 67 five number of units which we're pulling from here if we plug that information in we can do this multiplication we come up with this and then we can do the math and uh, subtract the 11,475 from each side and come out with the fixed cost of 17,525. So that's a way to kind of back into the behavior of the line if it's not known. And then we have the least square regression. The least square regression is usually covered in advanced accounting courses. It is commonly used with spreadsheet program or, or calculators. So the objective of the cost analysis remains the same. Determination of the total fixed cost and the variable cost. So we're not going to calculate it right now, but if we looked at the comparison, notice that the comparison of these three methods are the same, and we come up with slightly different numbers, the fixed cost here being 16 under the scatter diagram and the variable cost being 20 cents versus the high-low method where we have 17,525, the variable portion 17 cents, and the least square, which is 69.47, and uh, the 19 cents. So we come up with slightly different methods in trying to determine the variable and fixed portion and the goal of these methods of course is to help us to then make predictions and make budget make uh, predictions about different types of things that we can do to make determinations in the future and therefore the accuracy of these are all estimates they're all estimates so we we want to make the estimate you know as accurately as possible